The Corps of Cadets making the march into Mikey Stadium where the Black Knights have won their last six games. They are 4-0 at home, 5-1 overall on the season. Cade Ballard and Tyre Tyler, these young men stepped in the fifth and sixth quarterbacks in the rotation last week, led them to a win, and they're back home along the banks of the Hudson today. It's college football proudly presented by the Home Depot. Out of the SOCON, the Southern Conference, the Bears of Mercer playing just their second game of the season against the Black Knights of Army off their best start since 1996. Ross Tucker, seven years in the National Football League in the trenches up front. Tina Servasio on the field. My name is Ben Holden. It is a pleasure and an honor to be with you, Ross. Let's start with last week. I think back, though, two weeks ago when we were here. They're playing the Citadel. You talked about, hey, they're off to a 3-1 and one start, but... Now they're off to a 5-1 and one start after last week. Huge win. Yeah, and Jeff Munkin told us yesterday it was clearly their biggest win this season. I mean, think about it. Fifth and sixth string quarterbacks on the road against a team that had just gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with BYU 27-20. Really impressive victory for the Black Knights. It sure was, and it goes to their recruiting and their depth. And here are the quarterbacks. Cade Ballard expected to start today on the left. Tyre Tyler on the right. He hadn't taken a snap under center in three years. Ballard had only taken one before the season got to last week, and that was in a relief role. Christian Anderson still out. Jamel Jones still out. So these two young men are going to do it by committee here today. And as you show us from last week, Ross, in our Do Project Smarter segment today, brought to us by the Home Depot, they had some help doing it as well. They both scored touchdowns on the quarterback zone, and you need the tight end, wing back, and fullback to block. Watch the wing back seal the edge. The fullback kicks out, and Tyler has some legit speed. 37-yard touchdown for the Black Knights. This will look familiar. Wing back seals the edge. Fullback Anthony Atkins gets a good lead block, and Ballard powers through for the touchdown for the Black Knights. Speaking of power, the Mercer Bears have got a good one, over 2,000 yards in the career of Tyree Devison. What have you taken away watching him? He kind of reminds you of the Army B-backs as a fullback. 5'8", 233 pounds. He told us that he squats 600 pounds. Guess what? He looks like it when you watch him run. He's going to have to move the chains for the Mercer Bears tonight. Yeah, and as you and I talked before we came on the air, an imperative that Mercer get off to a good start here today. Core of cadets only approximately 4,300 there, no fans allowed. And there is DeAndre Johnson, who last week took the opening kickback, 100-yard return. Jeff Monk, and we asked him yesterday, he said, I'm not kicking away from him. Our coverage team has been good. He has six career touchdowns, and two of them are kick returns. This one, he waves the hand at the goal line, a fair catch, and Mercer will begin from the 25-yard line. So Harrison Frost is the young man that runs the show at quarterback. Prior to their game two weeks ago, Ross, he had not made a start in 693 days. What did you take away from him and watching their first game on tape? Well, he's got a really strong arm, and the team likes him. There's a reason why they voted him a captain, even though he's only a redshirt junior. Runs the offense very effectively. They actually had a 14-3 lead against Jacksonville State in their first game. They did, and in his high school days, Harrison Frost, he didn't play much, only because he was behind Justin Fields, the quarterback at Ohio State. Some variation of the wing T in this Mercer offense. They're going to try to spread it around and get it to their skill guys the best they can. A little swing pass there is caught by Devin Crosby for a decent pickup on first down. Rest of their skill guys and the guys up front, Ross, on our eye bar, who grabs your eyes? Well, Nyd Manziel is only a true freshman at left guard. And DeAndre Johnson, who you see right there, had two touchdowns against Jacksonville State as Mercer goes up tempo. They do, and they put it into the hands of DeAndre Johnson, takes it across the 30-yard line. It'll bring up a third and four for the Bears of Mercer. On our eye bar, the Army defense. I'm guessing you're going to talk about Ryan Duran here? I've been very impressed by Duran. He started the last few weeks while Wabina Bonsu was out and has acquitted himself very well. Army's got some awesome depth this year all the way around. They really do. Third down and four. Mercer last week on third down. They were eight for 16. Actually, two weeks ago, they played their opener. They get the ball into the hands there, and it is pulled in and caught for the first down by Ty James, the redshirt freshman out of Norcross, Georgia. Nice job there by Frost. Just a quick out route. Sometimes Army will give you the underneath stuff. You got to take it. You saw that a lot last week against Texas San Antonio. 
The shift on the O-line for the Bears and Mercer, just their second game this season. They hand it off for the first time in the ball game to Tyrae Devison. Not much doing there. I don't anticipate Mercer being able to run the B-back Devison up the middle very much against this front. For Army, they're going to have to get on the perimeter. They're going to have to throw the ball. Watch how often they shift their offensive linemen right before the snap. You have to be set for a second and then go. Watch this. Yep. They do a lot of this. A little jet sweep. They put this one into the bread basket of Fred Davis. He plays a position. It's called a joker. Explain that, Ross. Well, they've got two wing backs. They're both called jokers. You know, it's funny when Drew Cronick, their head coach, I asked him to describe the offense. He said, Delaware wing team meets millennial Oregon. <laughs> two wing backs. They like to get those guys the ball on jet sweeps. They also have to be able to block the perimeter, similar to what you see from Army. So third down and five here. Second, third down conversion attempt to this drive for Mercer. Army defensively, 23rd in the country at 32.9. Their success rate, but again, Mercer gets the ball into one of their skill guys. They get the first down. They get it into Army territory to the 43-yard line before Davis's gang tackled there. It was a blitz from the left side. Watch, Army brings the heat. Frost gets it out just in time, sitting down against the zone coverage. Good start for Mercer. Melka Morrison just a skosh late in getting there. Good pick up to start things off on a fresh set of downs to the 39-yard line. That is one of three running backs we're expected to see here for Mercer. That is Al Wooten, the second on the carry, the freshman at six foot. Quickly back to the line. Frost rolls out, got a man wide open, near side. It's caught and slipping at the 37 there was Davis. They told us we'd see a lot of Davis and DeAndre Johnson. We've seen a lot of both so far. Yeah, he had more room there. Just his outside foot gave out on him, inside foot right there. And you can see we're gonna, this will be all game for Mercer. They are running up tempo, lots of shifts and motions. Their betting bet, that Army's three or four days of practice was not enough for them to always be able to get lined up correctly against all their shifts and motion. Sometimes it's hard to even know who the eligible receivers are. That's right. Third, third down attempt of this drive already, and Mercer's got it, and then some. DeAndre Johnson stepped out of bounds. They're going to spot him out at the 28. Mercer looking pretty sharp here on this opening drive. Left side of the screen, watch number five, Fred Davis with the cup lock right here. Boom, 22 goes down Cunningham. You got to seal the edge if you're going to try to get to the perimeter. Reminds you of Army right there. With the wing backs, they call them the Jokers for Mercer, getting on the edge, cutting down the defender, and letting their ball carrier get to the perimeter. Very well done by Mercer. Sure was. Looking good here is John Radigan in the Army defense. You mentioned it. A uh, very quick turnaround for them, a normal week, but this Mercer team hasn't played in two weeks. Again, into the hands of Johnson, dragged from behind. As Bonsu had a hold of his jersey from the backside, he is back in the lineup this week. I really like what Mercer's doing with these jet sweeps. Here's DeAndre Johnson. Get to the perimeter quickly. You know, they're not going to be able to run the ball down Army's throat, but you get to the perimeter, you only have to block two or three guys, and you got yards. Here's Devison. And he gets close to the 15. They're actually going to give him the 15. And another first down here for Mercer. Tyree Devison. 20 career rushing touchdowns came in with over 2,000 in his career. Drew Chronic, 47 and 7 in his career, coming in at a couple of different spots. Very good success rate, and he has won every stop he's made so far. And with this opening drive, you can see why. They're yeah. creative, they're well prepared, they're well coached. Yep. 12th play of this drive. That's Johnson in motion. Cross the fake to Devison. Well, pass protect and into the end zone. It was. Intended there for a young man that caught a touchdown in their first game, Ethan Deerum, but he could not reel it in for the score. Play action pass, hard action to the right. Deerum was open in the middle. He was. Frost just put too much on it. He wanted to get over Radigan's head, 47, but was too high for Deerum. A better throw. That's a touchdown for Mercer. First pass that Harrison Frost has missed today. He's four of five for 29 yards. Down, tight. Frost 
to Davis. Good job by Army's defense. Brock was right there waiting for it. He knew what was going to happen. And that's a big time play, bringing up a third and long. Third and long, and it's our Verizon red zone, and Mercer's inside of the red zone. It's brought to us by Verizon. Two for two so far. What are you looking for here, Ross? Well, you got to be careful if you're Harrison Frost and Mercer because they got some ball hawks with Broughton and Cunningham back there, and you want to reserve the right to at least kick a field goal when it's third and long like this. Army with two interceptions against FCS teams this season. Speaking of the ball hawks, they get it into space. Good open field tackle. They're going to lose yardage. Johnson with a catch and a nice stop made there by Jones. Cameron Jones on the tackle. You see this a lot, kind of a jailbreak screen. You get some guys out in front. Conservative play call by Mercer. Kind of what I expected, though, on third and long. So they're going to try the field goal. It'll be the first field goal attempt of the season. Again, just one game for Mercer for Caleb Dowden. And they're calling this a 36-yard attempt. Good snap, good hold, good kick. It's up and good. And Mercer strikes first, drawing first blood. 3-0 for Drew Cronick and his guys on a Macon, Georgia, on top of Army, as we'll see the Black Knights with it when we come back. Well, for just the second time this season, Army did not score first. They have the ball coming up. Mercer, what a drive, Ross Tucker. 15 plays, 56, took 652, and Dowden sticks a 36-yard field goal. These guys look like they came to play today. Yeah, a very, very impressive drive by Mercer. Look, you know that they're well coached. There's a reason why Chronic has had so much success mm -hmm. at other places. Fifth year as a head coach, you see the return men on the left there. You got Tyrell Robinson, the speedster back there. A.J. Howard to his left. Dowden handles the place kicking. This is Devin Folzer will do the kickoff duties for the Bears of Mercer. 3-0 lead for the visitors from Macon, Georgia, out of the Southern Conference. And the FCS is Robinson, the fair catch inside the five. First time today, we welcome in Tina Servasio. Tina. Well, Ben, before getting the start against UTSA last week, quarterback Cade Ballard was only practicing with the Army scout team. Head coach Jeff Munkin said it was absolutely remarkable. Ballard wasn't getting any kind of reps within the option with the quarterback center exchange, handoffs, pitch, nothing. But he walks over to the first team on Sunday, and six days later, he helps Army win a football game. But a lot of credit also goes to quarterbacks coach Cody Ward. He just prepared these players, even though they were down to their fifth and sixth string quarterbacks. Yeah, that is remarkable stuff. You saw Worley on the sideline. Brent Davis is also on the sideline today as well. Matt Drinkall is in the OC spot just because of the two quarterbacks that are playing here today in the inexperience. And Ballard had taken one snap prior to last week, and it was late in that Louisiana Monroe victory for Army. Your thoughts on him, Ross, and what you saw last week out of him? Well, you can tell he's got a real comfort level with the offense. He's the better thrower between he and Tyler. He's a little bit thicker. And I just love how much you can tell he cares. I mean, the energy he had on his touchdown run was spectacular. Completed one pass, a 53-yard pickup that led to that touchdown to Cam Harrison, who was back in the lineup last week for the first time this season. First on run, little QB action there on the left side. I bar starters, who's grabbing your eyes, Ross? Well, speaking of freshmen, how about the left tackle, Jordan Law, a freshman who's really developed, spent a year under Andy Wolfram at the prep school, got bigger, stronger, asks the right questions, and Brent Davis said, hey, you put it on tape in practice, we're gonna put you in the game. They did last week, and he did well. Yep, again, a testament to Army's coaching, their preparation, their recruiting is Mercer not fooled at all here. A minimal pickup right there on the carry by the speedster. No speed there from Tyrell Robinson. Mercer's defense, the most experience they have, Ross, is a player with three starts. So vital for them. They play well as a group today. It's unbelievable. Isaac Dowling, one of several true freshmen that plays. They call him the humble beast. 16 yeah. tackles and a sack against Jacksonville State. He doesn't talk very much. He lets his pad do the talking for him. He sure did in that game, so we'll be keeping our eyes on him. Second and nine after a one-yard pickup by Robinson. Into the hands of the speedster Robinson again. And he is
just dropped about the 42 yard line. Hopkins on the tackle. He had double digit tackles last week as well, or two weeks ago for Mercer. Third down coming up. Robinson's the guy they love to get the ball to. It was fun talking with him yesterday, the leading rusher. And now over 300 yards, still doesn't have a touchdown. I mean, they got five guys, Ben, with 150 yards rushing and three touchdowns. Robinson's the leading rusher, but he hasn't gotten six yet. No, he has not. So third down and three here for the Black Knights. And to give it off to Jacoby Buchanan, who just about gets three yards every time he touches the ball. It's going to be fourth and a yard here from Army's 45, and Jeff Munkin looking on. I'm sure the analytics are telling them to stay on and go for it. No hesitation whatsoever. Army very comfortable in these situations, although it also presents a heck of an opportunity for Mercer. You know, if they can get some penetration here, somehow find a way to stop them, that would be gigantic. Army 10 out of 15 on fourth down this season. That's Buchanan. Buchanan's got it. He's a load, and he's got the first down. So nearly the 47-yard line. So Jeff Monkey, who last week moved into fourth all-time and wins here at Army. The drive continues. Yeah, they, it's, it's really quarterback sneak blocking up front. Everybody's just kind of wedging in there, trying to give Buchanan a little bit of room, and then he hammers that big body in there and gets just enough. Saw Brent Davis there in that shot down on the field. Last week they had problems with communication. They made the call that he was better suited to be down on the field. Here's Ballard, little rollout. Got Walters there, wants to take a shot and does. Got Robinson, catch me at the 21. Tyler Robinson, his first career touchdown at Army. And it's through the air with a Black Knight strike on a 53 yard touchdown. Speak of the devil right there. Check out Tyrell Robinson. He's going to run a deep post while they go ahead and run bootleg action. Number 21 is going to run a deep post, gets behind the safety. Ballard lofts it perfectly to him, catches it, able to make one guy not be able to tackle him. And speak of the devil, Ben, he's got a yes, touchdown. He does. And Cade Ballard with his first career touchdown pass. He's had two completions as Salyers comes on and is absolutely true. And it's 7-3. Ballard showing the arm, Ross Tucker. He had a big pass last week to Cam Harrison. Another big one this week to Tyrell Robinson. What a start to Kate Ballard's career here at West Point. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Home Depot. How doers get more done. By Verizon, the network more people rely on gives you more. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. I always love seeing the old pictures of Army. That was from 1996. They started 9-0. Their first loss that season was at Syracuse, they finished that season 10 and two, and Cade Ballard, 53 yards, and Tyrell Robinson, he's in the books, his first career touchdown, Ross. Still doesn't have a rushing touchdown. <laughs> give it time, give it time. No, it's it's coming soon. It is. That was a special one for both those guys. First touchdown pass for Ballard, touchdown reception for Robinson. A thing of beauty, and Army did it seven plays in 75. Here's DeAndre Johnson. There's a flag down. Johnson breaks through there, and he's dropped just shy of the 35, but we will have to check the penalty flag first. If you're just joining us, Johnson, a dangerous weapon. Two career returns for touchdowns on kickoffs, but we're going to have to check this penalty first. Our referee is Mike Roach. Mike from nearby Albany on the call here today at Mikey. During the return, holding, receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down. So there's Drew Cronick and touched on it earlier, Ross, and his stops. I mean, this guy has done some serious winning. Last season, Lenore Ryan, he started at Reinhardt with his dad, a legendary coach in the great state of Georgia. A lot of respect for him in the football circles. Well, and, and there should be. And I think he's going to get it turned around quick at Mercer. They're playing a lot of young players. 
And I mean, they're at Reinhardt. They started the program in 2013. He and his dad at Reinhardt, they actually played against Mercer in yeah. Mercer's first game. Four years later, they're 13 and one yep. after they had just started the program. 47 and seven. Here they go, jet sweep, it's Fred Davis. Not much there, about a yard as Davis stopped there. You see the average yards per play. And a little bit more on Chronic, and I mean, you look at the win-loss, and it's pretty impressive. It is, and obviously this is a unique year. They'll have an eight-game spring schedule, but yeah. I really think playing these three games, Jacksonville State, Army, Abilene, Christian, is going to help them tremendously for that spring conference schedule. Well, they look great on their opening drive. 15 plays. They got a field goal. This one, a diving interception by Cameron Jones. What a play by Jones. Extended out parallel to the ground and makes the pick and they're posing for pictures. Jones filling in for McDuffie, who's out in the first half for targeting last week. He's covering DeAndre Johnson. Watch Johnson. Jones is on him. Frost can't find anyone. Jones stride for stride. It's a poor throw. Jones able to leap in front of it. That is so well done by Jones to just stay in the back hip like that. Huge play for Army. Huge play indeed. Army with its seventh interception of the season. So Army with the football at the 39-yard line of Mercer. Cade Ballard under center. Dive up the gut. A three-yard pickup on that run there. Armed Forces football today is proudly supported by Ram. Ballard coming out of the game. Tyre Tyler, number two, is in at quarterback. And that usually means they want to run the quarterback. Ballard's a little bit more powerful, but Tyler kind of reminds you of Jabari Laws a little bit in terms of yeah. his quickness to and through the hole. Until last week in a competitive game, Tyler had not taken a snap under center since 2017. I mean, Watching that game, going back through it in our preparation this week, just it's it's so impressive. The young men that did it and the staff that prepared him, and there's what he did last week at UTSA. Well, I mean, a month ago, he was playing slot back. Yeah. He was essentially the sixth string quarterback. They know he's got some speed and quickness. They wanted to find a way to get him on the field, so they had him at slot back, but with the injuries to Anderson and Jones, and Balan, they needed him back at quarterback, and boy, did he rise to the occasion. Yep. Sanded McCoy in the first D, as they call him on post. McCoy just shy of the first down there. When it's fourth and short like this for Army, do we even have to talk no. about the decision? It's a given. I mean, it's a given, man. If you're new to watching Army football, they go for this every time. Like they go for this. There's Brent Davis on the right with Jeff Monk, and normally upstairs, but again, with the two quarterbacks, they're going to play the majority of this game. They plan to. They just feel right now it's a better situation to have them down there to be able to face-to-face -face talk with those young men. McCoy. Extends, I beg your pardon, that was Buchanan. Two threes, not one three, but Buchanan getting the first down. He's having a great season this season through six games. I've never seen a team more comfortable in fourth and short situations than Army. I mean, yeah, they are so amazing. comfortable, and now out goes Ballard, in comes Tyler again. The only thing you have to be a little bit careful of if you're Army is you don't want to telegraph where you're going to do too much mm -hmm. so that teams know when Tyler comes in it's going to be a run, and it's likely a quarterback run. Fresh set of downs. Tyre Tyler under center. Tyler trying to follow Buchanan. And a yard and a half down to Tina for more on these QBs. Yeah, so after the Robinson touchdown, when the offense came back to the sideline, of course, Ballard went right over to quarterback's coach, uh, Cody Worley, but he pulled over Tyler as well. So he was speaking to both of his quarterbacks. You could almost see that Worley was preparing them for this next series. And it was also fun to watch Brent Davis get down on his knees and start writing on that whiteboard, getting his offense ready. <laughs> He's out of his, uh, his, his digs up here on uh, level four. So they had to scale a wall to get back into the stadium last week. Here's a pitch. Robinson with that speed, foot in the ground. And a good pickup, and he's got a first down. They're going to spot him out at the 12-yard line. Tyrell Robinson, the first down run. Yeah, I like that short side option there because you get to the perimeter quick. See how quick they're able to get to the perimeter. Yep. And the receiver was able to run off the corner of that side. There was no pitch man 
for Mercer to that side. I am still trying to get over the fact that Robinson told us yesterday, he said, something I'd like to do is get faster. I said, how in the world do you get faster? He is lightning quick. Now ready, tight. Now we're back in the game, and they drop him. Good job up front. They get in there to get the pressure on him, and Jordan Swain making the play. They had an issue there. If you, Brent Davis told us yesterday, trying to not do too many replays for these young quarterbacks, mm -hmm. and I think there was a missed exchange. I think Ballard wanted to give the ball to Cade Bernard there. Loss of two on the play. That'll do it for the opening quarter here from Mikey Stadium. Army on top of Mercer, 7-3. Great to have you with us here on CBS Sports Network as you're watching college football proudly presented by the Home Depot. My name is Chief Sai, serving with the 42nd RSG here at Al Assad Air Base. I'd like to give a shout out to my family back in Ocean View, New Jersey. Go Army! Thank you for your service and all the men and women around the globe that serve our great country in the military. And it's time for our view of the Corps, brought to you today by M Corps, the Corps, about 4,300 cadets in here, Ross. And it's always a great release for them to come to these games, especially now here in 2020 with things the way they are. And always great to see them. I am so thankful that yes. they're here. I, you can feel and sense their energy, even though it's not packed like it normally is. They bring plenty of juice for us. They do bring the juice. Second quarter. Set to begin here with Ross Tucker, Tina Sarasi, all of our crew. My name is Ben Holden. Great to have you with us wherever you're watching today. First play of the second quarter. Cade Bernard down to the six-yard line. Army can get a first down. Looks like just inside of the three of Mercer as the second is underway. Yeah, that's an interesting play right there because watch the fullback. You'll see the actions going to the right and the fullback tries to come back inside. It's almost a, like a trap the opposite way of the option action. I'm not sure I've seen them run that play before. So what Army has done in the red zone has been, well, it's been spectacular. 16 of 18, 13 TDs and a hat trick of field goals between Salyers and Moretzky. Tyler back under center. Tyler, Tyler trying to cut in there. And he is cut off. He's close to the first down, but I think he's a little bit shy of it. Ken Stanley on the tackle for Mercer. It's unbelievable how often they run that quarterback zone with Tyler. I mean, everybody knows it's coming. They're still able to get close enough that they get fourth and short, as we've discussed several times already. Yep. Army almost always goes for it in these situations. Usually it's fullback time. It's interesting. They've been bringing in Buchanan, you know, the big boy for all these short yardage runs. Cassandra McCoy is so good in short yardage situations as well. Yep. So the third, fourth down attempt of the game. Army two for two. It's Buchanan. He didn't need much, and he's got it to the one-yard line. So first and goal coming up for Brent Davis. Normally upstairs on the field, and they got a fresh set of downs. Jaden Taylor on the tackle. I don't like that Brent Davis is down there. For it's my, different. For, for, no, well, for me, I, I like when they score a touchdown and, he, the and we, we have the camera. Yeah. I like the Davis cam. Yes, right. Cru crushes a Diet Coke, slams the table, gets excited. <laughs> Remember, Brent, this is not about you coaching your team. It's about Ben and I's enjoyment entertainment during the game. <laughs> the minor details, right? <laughs> This is the 11th play of the drive. Sandy McCoy, the V-back. McCoy trying to push his way in there, and he does. His sixth touchdown of the season leads the team for Army. And the first team, McCoy, adds to the Black Knights' lead. Ten points now with a point after coming up as they spend the money on those cannons. And fullback dive to the right. Really nice job at the point of attack by both Powell and Law, the freshman with the unbalanced line there. And McCoy just kept driving his feet up at two yards in the end zone there. Team leading sixth touchdown of the season. Brooks Jose will hold for Landon Salyers. 22 minutes of the second quarter. And Salyers two for two on the day. It's an 11-point lead. The real McCoy, Santa McCoy, finding his way into the end zone on the one-yard powerful finish from him, and it's 14-3 Army. 148 into this quarter, and Santa McCoy with a one-yard touchdown that capped off an 11-play drive, 39 yards, took 536. It was all set up by the 
first interception of the season for Cameron Jones and McCoy powered his way into the end zone for the Black Knights to give them now an 11 point lead. The key thing so far for Army Ross, we've talked about it. You always talk about it with Army fourth down. It is no surprise they're three for three today. Well, and it's been Jacoby Buchanan every time. You know, six foot, 260 pounds, able to either power through, hop over, plow through. He's done it three different ways, but every time he's been successful. He is a load at 260. Really blossomed this season. We saw him some last season, but this season he has really, really stepped up his game. And in the end zone, about six yards deep. No return at all there for the dangerous DeAndre Johnson. Tonight, or this morning, I guess, for those in the Eastern time zone, two Eastern. Join the Inside College Football crew as they recap today's games and deliver the top headlines of the day in college football right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. And we're going, we're, we're going retro this week, Ross. We're back to noon, all, all the way back to last season. I love it. I love it, too. I love noon. I love that we've got a million <laughs> games today. Just yep. keep it right here on CBS Sports Network all day long. It's 8.54 on my cable. I just keep it right there. Channel 854 all day. CBS Sports Network. Yep, the Mountain West returning. Two games in the Mountain West. Maybe coming up when we're done. We'll take it on the Houston Cougars. And here is Tyree Devizen. You touched on in the open. He's he might remind you of a be back here at Army. He's 5'8, 5'9, he's five, five, about 220. He is a load. You don't see very many guys able to run through Eric Smith a little bit like that. Look at that lower body. Look at his legs. Those are some I hockey mean, player legs. That. They're almost connected to his knee. I love it. Tree trunks. Over 2,000 in his career. And the near side, it's caught shy of the 35-yard line. Cross pass. Catch is made by Ty James. So third down and looks like about, well, long two, I'm going to call it. Very important drive here and down is Mercer. You know, it's 14 to 3. You can't let the game get away from you. And really, if I'm Drew Chronic, this is four down territory, Ben. You want to get it on third down, but I would go for it on fourth down. If you're really trying to win this game yep. and stay in this game, you cannot punt it away if you don't get it here unless you lose yardage. We saw Abilene Christian do that a few weeks back. We saw the Citadel do it. Here's Frost on the rollout. Frost has got plenty of room. Slides in safely, and he'll pick it up by a yard or so to keep the drive alive for the Mercer Bears. It's a good decision there by Frost. You'll see as he rolls out, there's nobody really open. Watch down the field. Army does a nice job on the crosser. Malcolm Morrison has the guy in front of him. The play there, really, if Frost could have thought of it, would have been to attack the line of scrimmage and then just lob it to DeAndre Johnson because he had Malcolm Morrison number two in a bind. Fresh set of downs out of the gun from the 35. Devison spins away. Good job with his balance there, putting his hand in the ground. And he gets about almost five on the carry. What a great kid Devison was, wasn't he? Was, he? Yeah. It was fun to talk with him. His older brother, Rashad, is in the Army. Mm -hmm. He wants to do sports marketing, sponsorship sales for a college team after he graduates. He's the only senior starter for Mercer on the offensive side of the ball. He said they call him old man or <laughs> uncle. Yes. I think I like uncle better than old man. I'm an old man. Come on, uncle's cool. I'd rather have uncle, too. Open target. To the 47 yard line. Catch made there pass. by Brandon Mays, a redshirt sophomore out of Danville, Georgia. 75 players on the roster from the state of Georgia for Mercer. Army has 19 on their active roster today. A very good recruiting ground. And Drew Chronic, as we've, well, I suppose, chronicled somewhat here, knows how good of an area that is to recruit. Being from there, good pickup there in the Army 48. And when you're talking about building this program further, that's that's number one. You got to recruit. You got to have talent. He said he anticipates having about 75% yeah. of their roster from the state of Georgia. They have pretty high academic standards at Mercer. He said higher than most. So they'll have to go out of state at times to get certain positions. But I like what they're doing on this drive. I yep. really like when they run some of these naked boots and get frost on the edge. Good job sealing the edge several times here. Pick up a five on first down. Little play fake down the middle looking for one of the tight ends there. Incomplete. 
trying to find Justin Bray there, product of Collierville, Tennessee. Third and five coming up. You know, you think of Eric Smith, the linebacker number 53. Mm -hmm. You think of him as a run stuffer. You know, heavy into the hole. That was excellent coverage by him. He was stride for stride there on a tight end down the seam off of play action. Nate Woody, the deep coordinator, couldn't stop singing his praises yesterday. He said he's still not getting the credit he deserves. He's underrated. Mercer four of five on third down. Could be four down territory again here, Ben, depending on this down. They need the 43 to get it. It's nearly picked off. It's broken up by Cameron Jones, who had a pick earlier back in the opening quarter. I'd say it was broken up by Steven Peterson, True. the Mercer receiver, because watch Cam Jones. He jumps on it. Peterson has to get in there. It's almost pass interference. It was. Cam Jones, this is the thing that it, watch Cam Jones, reads the quarterback's eyes and explodes through it. That's called driving on the football. He saw the short drop. When it's a short drop by the quarterback, they're going to get the ball out quick. Jones identified that. That is so well done for a guy that's their third or fourth corner. So here's Grant Goopel, who has had five blocked in his career. This one, though, he doesn't have to worry about that, but he kicks it into the end zone. and. This part of their game, last game for them, was not good. It's much better so far today for the Bears of Mercer. A 48-yard punt, Army on top, 14-3. 9.46 to play until halftime. Army on top, 14-3. A 53-yard touchdown pass to Tyrell Robinson. A one-yard run by Sandy McCoy. And time now for this week's Where Are They Now? Brought to us by Ram Chucks. He was a four-year starter and a tough customer. Trent Steelman holds the Army career rushing record with 45 on the ground. Touchdowns, that is. That is third in school history and rushing yards as well. Steelman served in the military and the Army at Fort Lee, Virginia, as well as Hunter Army Airfield in Georgia. He is currently the quarterback coach at Eastern Kentucky University. I've met Trent yep. when he was the a coach at Jacksonville. I remember watching him play and then getting a chance to meet him. Yep. I had him for the first couple of years I was here. Bobbled and fallen on quickly by Ballard. I remember the, the record breaking TD was out of our booth to the left for Steelman. Here's a look back at the watch Swain right here. Watch Swain's right arm. Yeah. Right there. Boom. Yep. Knocks it out. Excellent job. Swain has come up a couple times here. Another true freshman gets that right arm out there. And you can bet Cade Ballard's going to hear about that when he comes over the sideline like he just did. He Ball did. security is job security. Meyer Tyler. Keeps it right side. That was Swain diving over the pile to help finish off Tyler. So Mercer now, they know they've got Army in a, a situation that's not as favorable as they'd like on third down. I believe that it's been quarterback zone with Tyler every time he's been in there except for one. Yeah. Every play but one, they've run quarterback zone. I think they need to be careful with that a little bit. Even though they blocked it so effectively last week, these teams are going to know it. Now Ballard third and long. You would expect another pass attempt. Got to be careful with the football. You have an 11-point lead. Army 0 of 3 on third down, but they're 3 of 3 on fourth down. This different territory if they go for it. They have to go for it. Pressure coming. Back. He's dropped. He's dropped from behind. Great pursuit getting in there to make the tackle. For the backside was Isaac Dowling. You talked about him earlier, Ross. Yeah, how about him? Watch Dowling. You're going to see, I, I believe that's him right there. He'll end up blitzing and chasing it down. Take a look. Dowling sees it, hits the hole, boom, gets past Mike Johnson, chases it down. Only a freshman as well. That's the guy I said earlier they call the humble beast. He had a sack against Jacksonville State in the team high state. Oh! And Harding didn't get that off, partially blocked. So Mercer coming after him there. And Army will down this at the 34-yard line. So great job by that special teams group there for Mercer, helping their cause out. Dowling, the true freshman, playing like a veteran. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. By Serve Pro's Proactive Cleaning Program. Certified Serve Pro Clean. A higher standard of clean for your business. And by Mercedes Benz. The best or nothing. 
very autumnal look here along the banks of the Hudson. The colors right around peak. Some areas past peak. The youngsters looking on the cardboard cutouts. And today, Army football players are really wearing teal trust ribbons to represent West Point's efforts to fight sexual harassment and assault at West Point and in the Army. So on first down, it's Tyree Debison. After Mercer got a piece of that punt by Harding, they get their best starting field position of the day, Ross. And a heck of a three and out by the defense gives Mercer a chance to make this a one-score game again. Yeah, you're right about that. It sure was. They had, they saw the opportunity, and they made the most of it. Radigan on the tackle there, along with Cunningham. And pass was caught there. Really enjoyed talking with John Radigan yesterday. Johnny Nation. Johnny Nation. Told us it came down to Ball State, Princeton, and my alma mater and Army. Yeah. When he was coming out of high school, he just felt like Army had the best of both worlds. You could get the Princeton academics, but could get the Ball State aspect of playing FBS football on opponents like Michigan and Oklahoma. Radigan trying to step up here with the defense on third and three for Mercer. To Johnson into space. This guy's dangerous. Good tackle from behind right there. That saved what could have been a massive play. One of those defensive linemen that have been so good, Ryan Duran, with a great tackle after a nine yard gain. Yeah, and a terrific block also. Watch 57, John Harris gets just enough of Cam Jones out there. Mm -hmm. Good job by Harris. He's the best O lineman for Mercer, the Virginia Tech transfer, but you're right, that hustle by Duran, he's been so impressive. I think the thing that jumps out to me the most, Ben, yeah. about this year's Army team, the depth. Sure. I mean, how many guys like Cam Jones, Duran, second string guys come in and play so well? Been impressive to watch it. First hand look at it here every Saturday along the banks of the Hudson. So Harrison Frost. Started this drive 7 4 11 through the year, and Duran's got a couple of block kicks. Got a piece of one last week down at UTSA 6 5. And I mean, I think it was game one that you talked about a guy that plays up front next to him, and that's Nolan Cockrell. Both those men got high praise from their coach, Jeff Munkin, when we chatted with him yesterday. Not much here. Andre Carter on the back of Wooten. Let's get down quickly before this third down to Tina. About ben, as you talk about Ryan Duran, he is 6'5". Now, players of this height at Army used to be a rarity, but Jeff Munkin shared that after his first season, he said, quote, we realized how short we were. We didn't have enough long players that could go out and gain weight. So it's a new philosophy where they get longer players where they believe that they could gain weight. Like a six-foot guy, if he puts weight on, he looks like a block. Yeah, they've all done it. Five out of seven on third down. Mercer was... Oh, six for eight, fourth down and eight. Do they do they dare do it here, Ross? What do you think? Go for it. Doesn't look like it though. No, they're not going to. I think it's because of the way their defense played on the last drive. They're going to continue to play the field position game. I think if they had gotten a little bit closer there, Drew Chronic probably would have gone for it. I like it more when they get Frost on the perimeter. And he kind of has that run pass option where he can throw it or he can tuck it away and get some yards himself with his legs. Grant Koopel, last punt was 48. That's his sixth punt he's had blocked in his career. I touched on that on the last punt. And they get in there and get number six. Ryan Aguilar gets in there to block it. Take a look. You'll see 83 flies in there, dives. Donaldson able to get he's got the speed as a receiver thought he could pick it up and go obviously he was already down you don't often see a wide receiver in the a gap like that between the guard and the center Ben if you have a wide receiver in that gap there's a reason he's coming and he's coming for the block. All right let's take a look at that block punt. Army has two guys in the A-gap, Andre Carter and Rakin Donaldson. So when the defender comes down to block him, Donaldson comes scot-free. That's something that they ID. Watch, he blocks down on Carter. There's nobody for Donaldson. That's something they ID'd during the week. They could tell that everybody was blocking their inside gap, their inside responsibility. Well, if there's two guys inside there, one of them's going to be free. It was Donaldson. Sixth punt in the career of Grant Goopel. He's had blocked the second this season. 
And it was Rican Donaldson. Those double numbers will get you. It was yeah, Matt Ryan Aguilar. My apologies. Here's Goopal looking on as his defense now facing the challenge of stopping Army. Armed Forces football is proudly supported today by Surpro. Special teams, man, three-phase game, and that hurt them in their game two weeks ago. It had a lot to do with them not winning. It really did, and that's something a good coach like Drew Cronick, that just eats at him because yep. he knows that's an important phase of the game. Ballard in a quarterback, gets the ball into the hands there. The outside is going to be a first down for Army. There is a flag down. It was pitched out there to A.J. Howard. The tackle was made by Lance Wise, but we'll hear from Mike Roach on what that flag back at the 36 Holding. is all about. Offense, number three. It's a 10-yard penalty, second down. Wipes out a 16-yard gain, as they call that on Sandon McCoy. Yeah, he was out in space and had a lot of time. Watch him. He's going he's gonna to lead on the edge right here. It's a good initial block, but it's the second effort that gets him. Watch. It's a good initial block on the perimeter. Then watch his left hand at the end of this, right there. They're not going to let you just tug that face mask a little bit in space like that. And Cade Ballard. Once he released that ball, took a shot there. Coming over the top there was Chris Taylor. He's had enough injuries. They get tricky here. This is Rican Donaldson. Donald into space. Donaldson inside of the 20. Gets him into the red zone. Big pickup there for the Black Knights. So Donaldson doing a little bit of everything. Blocking punts. Taking it on the... And they're on for a first down for Army. And let me show you the key block. It's going to be Jordan Law right there. Donaldson comes around, but Jordan Law is going to seal the edge. Watch the freshman line. He goes in. I'm leaving. Oh, no. I'm coming back. Seals the edge right there. Gets two guys, really, and Donaldson has the big game. I like that idea right there, Ben. You get a chance to block a punt, you get the ball. That's right. You should. You got to be some kind of reward. Gain at 29. Here is Buchanan, who bangs off a defender there. Probably left a dent on his way by. He almost broke that. He was yeah. very close to breaking that for a long one. You know, sometimes when there's a hole, Ben, they say that the running back needs to get skinny through the hole. <laughs> I don't know if Buchanan can do that. I don't. I, I mean, don't he's know in good he's... shape, but there's no getting skinny, right? Well, yeah, he's got yeah. good feet, but yeah, he's yeah. not getting skinny anytime soon. <laughs> on a training table, and he's dropped about 20 pounds from when they first got him back. When the football team reported back on post on June 1, here's Ballard right side. Ballard broke one tackle, won't break the final one there as he's dropped inside of the 10-yard line, bringing up third down with the clock moving, 2.40 and counting, remaining right now in this first half. Third and short, this is where Army likes to live. They're going right on the football. It's unbalanced to the right. Means they've got three offensive linemen to the right of the center. Ballard under center. Buchanan and Jacoby Buchanan to the four-yard line. That'll set them up first and goal. Clock stopped for the moment, 2.26 to go. Each team with three timeouts left in the half. You know, it's funny because a lot of times, Ben, you talk about they need to get a hole, you need to open a hole. On some of these short yardage runs, Army doesn't open a hole at all. Right. They just kind of plow through with, mm -hmm. the, with the, what they call wedge blocking. Everyone puts their helmet on the inside hip of the guy in front of them. There is no hole. They just push the defense back a yard and a half, two yards to get the first down. Yep. You hear it every time we talk to a team. You have all the years we've been here, and the teams always say they're playing. It is the most physical game we'll play. Because of that blocking, the things they do, McCoy with a touchdown already in this game, his sixth of the season to lead the Black Knights. You see Ballard there clapping his hands. Second and goal from the one. I'd... And Mercer should call a timeout right now. Yeah, they I mean, should. No, Army's at three. the one yard line. They've got three timeouts. Mercer needs to preserve as much time as possible for after Army eventually scores or maybe they get stopped on fourth down. No matter what happens, mm -hmm. Mercer should be preserving time right now. I don't agree with Drew Cronick not calling timeout here. And Army, conversely, is taking their time. They are. They're, they're, they have no problem with the fact that Santa McCoy didn't score a touchdown on first down. So the heavy, heavy set here for Army. McCoy in the backfield, Sandin McCoy using the leg drive, and McCoy has powered in for another one from short range to cap the drive for Army. The march capped off by his seventh rushing touchdown of the season, and it's 20 to three with a point after coming up. Fullback dive, good double team on the right side. He, I love the way Santa McCoy slides outside. 
Zach Hopkins 41 was there waiting for him, but that's tough when you're flat-footed and McCoy's leaning forward like that. 65 seconds remain in the half. Landon Salyer's on, been busy today. Third point after of the day for him. Goopel had a sixth career punt block by Reekin Donaldson, who had a big play on this drive, capped off the march was by Sandon McCoy, his team leading seven TD on the ground. Well, the day started okay for Grant Goopel. His first punt went into the end zone for a touchback, and not so much on the second one. They blocked it. Sixth career punt he's had blocked, and Two Mercer miscues and interception and the aforementioned punt block both led to Army touchdowns. Yeah, and in fairness, Ben, to Grant Goopel, there's nothing he could do there. No. I mean, there are times where it takes a while for a punter to get the ball off. That was not on Goopel at all. That was a missed assignment by the blockers up front. Any punter would have gotten that one blocked when you have a starting wide receiver come flying right up the middle of the field. Regan Donaldson said starting wide receiver had a 29 yard pickup on the last March for Army. Eight plays, 38 yards, took 355. Capped off by Sandon McCoy's second one yard touchdown of the day. Taken inside of the 10 by Fred Davis, ran into his own guy. Instead about the 16 yard line is Kieran Henderson down there to help on the stop. Coming up on the Verizon halftime report. Adam Zucker, Rick Neuheisel, and Brian Jones will get you caught up on all the latest scores and news around college football. They'll preview number two, Alabama, at Tennessee. That comes up 3.30 Eastern on CBS. It's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Man, did Alabama look good last week. Especially in the second half. Ooh. They just pulled away. Yep. So Mercer with the football. They'll begin from their own 17, trailing 21-3. All three timeouts remaining in their worst starting field position of the day. Harrison Frost, 9 of 14, throwing it for 51. And he's going to try to throw it here. He got hit right as he threw it, got away to Johnson. He made Broughton miss, a little shake and bake, and John Radigan finishes him off, but he's going to pick up the first down is Johnson. Nice job by Frost. You're not supposed to be unblocked off the edge like that. To be able to get rid of that ball while Carter hit him off the edge, that's really well done by Frost. Davis was in motion. Frost on the run. Fires caught over the 40. Third time today I've called the name of Ty James. Makes a catch there to move the chains again. Clock stop with 42 seconds remaining in the half until they get the stick set. Yep, no reason to use your timeouts there, but you do want to snap it as soon as possible. They've already used five, six, seven seconds. Pick up a 14 on that play. Back to the air. Just ducking down, getting into space there was Johnson, Jabari, Moore, and Radigan in the neighborhood. 30 seconds left, timeout, Mercer. Yep, Mercer and calls its first timeout of the half. It'll be a 30-second timeout. That's the right time to call a timeout. You're, you don't get the first down, so the clock doesn't stop there. They didn't get out of bounds. So that's well done that time by Drew Chronic. They're already at just about at midfield. Harrison Frost looking like he's in rhythm on this drive. There is Nate Woody. He hasn't gotten a lot of TV time this year, Ross. We haven't seen Nate a whole lot, but man, is his defense new scheme. Think about this. Third year, third defensive coordinator. Jay Bateman, then it was John Luce, now it's Nate Woody, and what a job he's done. He's done a terrific job, and he's got an absolutely awesome gator. Where can I get one of those camo army gators? That thing's incredible. Back right after this. Half a minute remaining until halftime. While well, we've got an opportunity, we want to remind you, you can start your Sundays with that other pregame show as the CBS Sports Network crew breaks down all the recent news and gets you ready for every game on the NFL calendar. That's tomorrow morning, 8 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Two timeouts left for Mercer. Ball at the 45-yard line, 30 seconds. they got plenty of time, right? Yeah, and you know, I like when they get frost on the edge with some of these boots, but those take up a lot of time. You know, they take up a decent amount of time when they do that. I don't think they'll do that this time. Frost out of the gun, 12 out of 17, three of three on the drive, but Army brings pressure. Nate Woody dialing it up and the hammer. Eric Smith gets in there to make the play. 26 seconds remain. Army takes its first time out of the half. Army takes one. Be a 30 second time out. They've got two left, each team with two remaining, with 26 seconds to play in the half. Let's take a look at Eric Smith, number 53. Army does such a good job 
of bringing their linebackers with blitzes. Radigan's up. Now watch Eric Smith. And right there, Harris is too late. Now you don't know what the called protection is. Maybe they were sliding for someone else and Harris just tried to pick it up late, but whatever it is, it didn't look like Frost knew whether or not he was protected there. So somebody's gotta be either blocking Eric Smith or Frost has to know that he's coming free, he's an unblocked defender, and get rid of the ball. Looked to me like Frost thought he was protected. So it's gonna set up a third and 11. Drew Cronick, he has two offensive coordinators, their co-coordinators, one of which is Bob Bodine, who came in with Jeff Munkin when he started here in 14, was with Army for three seasons, but Cronick calls the plays. He, he said, it's gonna be hard for me to let go of that one all the years he's done it. So third and 11 here. They shift and frost out of the gun here. Looking down the middle, it is throw, it is caught. First down. To so about the 41 yard line. Catch made by Zach Davis, freshman out of Clover, South Carolina, gain at 20. Mercer takes its second time out of the half. And because of what Mike Roach said, we're going to do the same. Quick 30, and we're back with the final 19 of the half. Well, you obviously can't see his whole face, but that is Bob Bodine, who we referenced before the break. We had a good shit. As a director, it's tough to ID coaches in this day and age, but our staff does a great job. And Bob was fun talking with him about his time here in Army and came in, in in Jeff Munkin's first year and decided to move on after three. It was really nice talking with him because he told us some of the differences, yeah. you know, between what Mercer's doing, what Army's doing. I love learning during yep. these meetings with these coaches. Same here, 19 seconds to go, and it's intercepted! John Radigan with a pick. He's got a pick six already this season, came in the first game. Can he take this back? Radigan with a great move, stepping over Frost. And he is finished off by Brandon Mays. Johnny Nation reigns again. He is so good in the passing game, man. He's awesome. Man. He, he is really, really fun mm -hmm. to watch in the passing game. I thought they had him, too. Watch Radigan. He's all the way up there. And then watch him drop back and be able to get underneath this throw. Looks like he's up. Now, as soon as it happens, he knows that guy's going down the seam. That's me. I got to swivel my hips and gets up there. That is just so well done. Pattern reading the quarterback there, and then he's got some legit skills. You can see the former high school yes. running back there, a little hurdle there. Excellent hustle by Mercer's Brandon Mays right there. Mays doesn't hustle like that. Radigan has another pick six. That's right, so with five seconds remaining after a 50-yard return, Landon Salyers is on. Jose will hold, 39-yard attempt. Trying to make it 24-3 at the break, and this one is not going to do the job. It was wide left, and we end the half, Ross. Army on top by 18, 21-3 after Mercer had scored first in the field goal. Yeah, Mercer doing a good job moving the ball at times. It's just been the block punt and the two interceptions that have really hurt them. If they can cut out the mistakes, I think they have a chance to stay competitive in this one. Very good. Army has led at the half in six of seven games this season. That's the end of the first half. Army on top of Mercer, 21-3. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented proudly by the Home Depot. Welcome back. Just about set to begin the third quarter. First, though, we look at our first half stats brought to us by your exchange. Two turnovers, Ross, and two Army touchdowns as a result. Well, that's been absolutely the difference in the game so far, because you can see Mercer, six of nine on third down conversions. They actually have more first downs than does Army. You don't see that very often. Mercer has 10 first downs, Army has eight. How's the weather over there, you good? <laughs> good, yeah, we got this glass in between <laughs> us. We're protected. Beautiful West Point Saturday. Great to have you with us. Ross Tucker, Ben Holden, Tina Servasio down on the field. Biggest takeaway or two from half number one for you? Well, that Mercer, I think, is doing a good job moving the football. I don't think that they're that outmanned. It's just been the mistakes, really, the interceptions, special teams that yeah. have been the difference. And that's what happens. When you play a team like Army, you cannot make these mistakes. They were moving the football at one point, and then they threw that ball. Jones picks it off. Then you have the block punt by Rake and Donaldson. That's a killer missed assignment there. And even the end of the half, look like they're going to get points again. 
but this time Johnny Nation, Johnny Radigan <laughs> gets the interception, almost gets more points for Army. Second pick of the season for Radigan. They've had some good linebackers here. He's a, along with Eric Smith, the latest in a really good stretch of guys. Going back to Andrew King, Jeremy Timpf, James Nonagle, Cole Christensen, now with a Chargers on their practice squad, and now you got these two guys just ripping it up at that spot. Right. We, we talked to John Radigan about that yesterday. I mean, not able to start until his senior year. He said, well, we've had some pretty good guys right. ahead of me. Yep. And there you saw the punter, Grant Goopel, six punts blocked in his career. Head coach there with a mask down, talking to one of his assistants there on the left. That was Drew Chronic. So Mercer, just their second game of the season. They'll play three here in the fall. They'll open up their SOCON season in late February. They're going to, they're hoping to play eight games in that conference. And the third quarter is underway here from Mikey Stadium. From the sixth, Tyrell Robinson. Robinson, Robinson through there. And that's going to be a face mask. Two flags come in. The first one to get to Tyrell Robinson there looked to me like he put his hand right on the face mask. We'll hear the word, though, from Mike Roach. What did we just say about special teams? Yep. Here's a look. Lance Wise. Personal foul, face mask, kicking team number seven. A 15-yard penalty to be added to the end of the run. First down. Lance Wise was there. They called the penalty on Ethan Deerham. Down to Tina for some updates. Tina. Spoke to Jeff Munkin, and he says that his young quarterbacks, Kay Ballard and Tyre Tyler, are playing well. But of course, he brought up the one three and out that Ballard had. He said he made that one mistake there, but otherwise, Ballard is playing poised. What helps is having Brent Davis here on the sidelines. He is calling the plays. He knows which quarterback he wants for each play. So he just takes the guy by the hand and puts him back out on the field. Mercer coach Drew Chronic says that they cannot turn over the ball here in the second half. There have been opportunities to extend their drives, but they just keep stalling. It is time to execute. Yep, we'll see if they can do that. Thank you, Tina. And Army's in business after the penalty. A 39-yard kick return. Tyler Tyler had a 37-yard scamper last week for a touchdown. Takes this one to the 25 of Mercer for the first down. And the first half possessions for the Black Knights, Ross. Pretty good. Touchdown, touchdown, punt, touchdown, missed field goal. At the end, you know, he mentioned the one, three, and out. It's interesting that they've got three touchdowns. It just doesn't feel like they've had the ball as much as they normally do. The time of possession was split pretty evenly there in the first half. Not usually the case. Usually Army's just grinding the clock. Yeah, you're right on with that. 14.52 for Mercer, 15.08 for Army in the T.O.P. department, as you referenced. There's Wise in on a tackle. Very young defensive group. Their leader has three starts. Their number two guy has two career starts. Yeah, they came into this year five total starts. You see right there, mm -hmm. Jaden Taylor, one of the really impressive freshmen they have. He had nine tackles and a sack and a half against Jacksonville State. Freshman came to play. Here's Ballard. Gets the ball into the hands of Robinson. Hits the B button and spins away. And got away there from the first would-be tackler to get a little bit more to bring up third down here for Army. Excellent work. Watch Ballard get crunched here. Good option responsibilities. Two there on Ballard. Robinson goes down. That's dangerous for Ballard. It's a good thing he's so powerfully built. So now you got third and six. Ben, a little bit further to go than Army usually likes. Tyre Tyler is out there, mm -hmm. back at quarterback. It's been at least 90% quarterback zone, which means he's pulling it. He just looks like he's making a check right now. Army one of five on third. Murphy went in motion. And Buchanan the lead block, and good luck trying to stop that. And they should have it. It's very close, but I think they're going to have it. What do you think? He's right near there. They're yeah. telling him to hold it. They are. They got to the line. Oh, now they move it back a little bit. Yeah, they're inches, literally inches shy if they don't decide otherwise. But they're spotting it inches shy, so it's going to be fourth and inches. All right, I'm going to start calling out plays, Ben, like <laughs> Romo does. Here comes the fullback dive to Jacoby Buchanan. Should I scream it so everybody knows? Here comes the fullback dive. Here comes Buchanan. Try and stop it. Tyre Tyler under center. Hands off to Buchanan. 
bulldozes his way for about three to get the first down. He gets three yards just about every time he touches it. Watch the O-line wedge blocking. Watch them all come inside. Inside step, drive, drive, drive. I mean, they're getting Buchanan a yard now. I'm telling you right there, Ben, you could have gotten the first down. Probably, yeah. Army is four for four on fourth down. Inside the red zone, and our red zone is brought to you today by Verizon. Two trips, a couple of touchdowns. Both of the one-yard variety, courtesy of Sandon McCoy. Seven on the season for him. Tyler following McCoy. Not much there. Finished off over the top there by Isaac Dowling. Got some help in there as well from Joel Gertman Jr. Well done by Gertman Jr. there. He is a sophomore. He plays the bandit position, kind of like the nickelback. Army calls that the Apache position. They don't really have that in the NFL, but with college football and all of the spread offenses, it's basically the nickelback position. It's a tough duty. I mean, you you got to be athletic enough to cover, but you got to be able to stick and make tackles like that. Gertman in the opener against Jacksonville State, tied a career high with four tackles in that loss. Ballard back in. You saw Tyre Tyler trot off. Ballard is tripped up. Touchdown saving tackle. Ballard taken down about the three yard line for Army. Watch Tyrell Robinson right here. This is a cool play. Quarterback follow right behind him. And here comes Army again. Quickly back out. And right up the gut. Touchdown. Given off to the B-back, Cade Bernard, and he plows his way in to cap the short march for Army to begin the third quarter. Cannon's going off, eight plays, 40 yards, and 413. Quarterback wedge blocking. I love the way the right guard, Dean Powell, is playing, just knocking people back, rooting them out of there. He was on all fours there, getting some room for Bernard. First rushing touchdown for Cade Bernard, and Close to a year, the 9th of November, and a big win over UMass. Salyers for the point after, missed a field goal at the end of the half, but he's perfect in the PAT department today. Four for four, 28-3, and Cade Bernard, part of a deep B-back room here at Army, caps off the drive for the Black Knights. Only 49 days, 49 to go in the countdown to America's game. It's the Army-Navy game presented by USAA on CBS Sports. And if you haven't heard, for the first time since 1943, that game will be played on post here at West Point. For more, Tina with a special guest. All right, Ben, thank you. I am joined by the athletic director of Army West Point, Mike Buddy. And Mike, big news yesterday with Army and Navy announcing that the Army-Navy game will be played here at Mikey Stadium. They're, all systems were go to have this game at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. When did you and the Navy athletic director start to discuss a move? Well, honestly, we probably started in the summer just having general conversations with COVID, with the situation. We just wanted to be, pre we wanted to be prepared for anything. And then they really picked up in the last week to 10 days where we thought we might have to look for an alternate option. Uh, and ultimately, we decided on Mikey Stadium as the safest and obviously easiest for us to execute a game. Of course, you have the natural bubble here at the U.S. Military Academy. Now, obviously, when you have the Corps of Cadets together with the Brigade of Midshipmen, that's near 9,000 people and then does exceed the attendance capacity where Pennsylvania had that that rule. Um, well, why was it important to make sure that you had the cadets and the brigade together for this game? Well, that, that's the essence of the Army Navy game. Our, our, our cadet athletes who compete out here today, they do it for the core. It's important that they have that connection. The midshipmen are no different. They're doing everything that they do for the brigade. They represent the, 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 those bigger units as a whole. And so it was paramount for us that the entire brigade and the entire Corps of Cadets can be here, experience a game, support their young men that, that are going to battle against each other on December 12th, but then go to battle with each other for the rest of their lives. And Army was always the designated home team for 2020. Were there any other venues, though, considered during these discussions? Yeah, absolutely, Tina. We, we talked to a, a bunch of basically any stadium between Baltimore and, and West Point just to make sure we had left no stone unturned. We wanted to make sure that we found the best fit. But ultimately, with the current situation, the health concerns, Mikey Stadium turned out to be 
the right place. Mike, thank you so much for all that information and your time today. Yeah, thanks, Tina. Ben, back to you. All right, Tina, thanks. And our thanks to Mike Buddy as well as pass incomplete there to DeAndre Johnson. I mentioned it when we threw down to Tina. They hadn't played it here since 43. They haven't played it in Annapolis at Navy since 42. From 1890 to 1893, they rotated the game, and it'll be quite a spectacle in here in December when that game takes place. Yeah, that'll be cool. Frost is 13 out of 20 slinging it. They keep it on the ground here. It's going to set up a third and about seven for the Bears of Mercer. Mercer really needs to get a first down here. Otherwise, this game could really get out of hand. Yep. You know, a quick three and out, putting their defense right back on the field. They've been most effective when Frost has been able to get on the edge a little bit with some of these bootlegs, get away from that front for Army. Radigan up in the A-gap between the guard and center, making it look like he's coming, although his posture, I think he'll drop out. There's Frost, quick throw to the outside, and coming in quickly. Just all over it was Malcolm Morrison. Beautiful job by him to read the play, knew it was coming and made the play. The punt group comes on for Mercer. Man, he plays that Apache role. That's the nickelback. Watch him identify this and explode. Actually, I crossed. He comes in motion and then identifies it. Really good job. Look at him. Wow. He is on the run outside in, too, huh. with his inside shoulder so that the receiver would have to go back inside. That was textbook by Morrison. Here's Goopel. First one good, second one blocked. Quickly gets this one away. It'll bounce at the 41. And it really didn't give a favorable bounce at all for Mercer. That's where they down it. That's where Army will begin after a 36-yard punt. Malcolm Morrison showing it off. Army on top by 25. For the Titans. Sun has come out here at Mikey Stadium. Looks beautiful. Sure does. Nate Ballard under center. Tyrell Robinson broke a tackle, picks up four on first down. So this Mercer program, they just brought their program, not just, they brought it back in 2013, but they shut their program down in 1942. And they've got a great coach to lead the way in Drew Chronic. And I, I heard through the grapevine, you have a trivia question for me? Do you know the most famous Mercer football alum? Can I get a hint? Yes, it, he was in a very popular movie. Uh, it's not Terry Crews. He went to Western Michigan. Uh, run to the near side. It's a kind of a trick question. Bill Yost, really? the defensive coordinator in Remember the Titans. Oh. He was the head coach, and then Herman Boone comes in. Yeah. Bill Yost went to Mercer and played basketball in the late 40s. You always know the hospitals these guys are born <laughs> in and stuff. I had, to, I had my research assistant, Ben Bernstein, hook me up with that one. I didn't come up with that on my own. I needed Ben Bernstein. He's like, nine years old, by the way. Nice. Well, so my son's 19. He's helped me with many things over the years. That's cool. I like it. Same side, same guy carrying the football. That's A.J. Howard wearing number five that Kel Walker wore so proudly here for his four years. Moves the sticks, does Howard. A 25-point lead for Army. Mercer's defense trying to find a way. I mean, they had a couple opportunities in that first half and just couldn't come up with stops when this game was, I'll go back to when it was 14-3 Army. And they don't really have the depth, right? No. It's the first year for Drew Chronic, so you'd think Army can start to wear him down here. Yep, you would think Tyler put it on the turf, came right back to him, and Tyler breaks through. And Tyre Tyler is near the sticks at the 36. And they're moving the sticks, so the march continues for Tyler and company after a gain of 10. One of the offensive linemen for Army is down. Jeff Munkin out there in the middle in the black shirt. Tim Kelly on the left, their longtime trainer. And while they tend to the injured player, we'll step aside as well for a quick timeout here at Mikey. Noah Knapp walking off the field, the junior out of Virginia. He's injured on that play before our timeout, at least dinged up. And Tim Kelly says, we're going to have you go in the tent, take a look. 
and they'll work on him and Tina will keep us updated down on the field as football now at the 36 yard line of Mercer here Ross. The good thing for Army is they play multiple centers pretty regularly so Connor Bishop the sophomore who's gotten a lot of time this year has been excellent played at Archbishop Wood in high school mm -hmm. he can fill right in seamlessly. Tyler Tyler is under center. McCoy in to protect Tyler taking a shot and it's too high and not really a catchable ball at all for Tyrell Robinson second down coming up first down a, a nice time to try that I think they wanted to show that they can and will in fact throw the ball with Tyre Tyler but you can see it's not as natural for him that ball yeah. didn't come out real smoothly in fairness nobody was open it's a good thing he kind of chucked it as far as he could mm -hmm. now at least they know it's not quarterback zone every time when Tyre Tyler is yes. in the game <laughs> <laughs> although guess what Ben guess what this play is going to be Exactly what Qu you just quarterback said. Zone. Yes. Here it comes. Here we go. Second and ten. Good look in there at it. And here's Tyler. Got a lead block in front. Tyler gets away. That block was huge. And Tyler taken out of bounds inside of the ten. Great block supplied by Jordan Law. You highlighted him early in this game, Ross Tucker. First and goal. Jordan Law, quarterback counter. Watch 77 come around. The true freshman. Watch him go low. Nice block right there. Tyre Tyler right off of it. Good to see a big tackle like Jordan Law get out in space. There you go. Sometimes that's what you need to do for me to be able to talk about you on TV. Trust me, big fellas. I want to talk about you as much as possible. Let's run that play more. Get some big guys out in space. Gain of 30. If your excitement level on a scale of 1 to 10 is normally a 12, you go to about a 16 when the linemen do things like that. Look at this nifty piece of running. And Tyler's saying touchdown, but they're saying his knee was down at the 1. They're going to go right on the ball sure. when they have you on the ropes like this. Yep. They go, and this is usually a, a fullback dive here. We might, it might be time for Jacoby fire the Buchanan. Yep. Buchanan's in there. They turn. Buchanan bounces off one, takes a shot, still trying to work, and you got to give credit to Mercer. They got about six hats to the ball there on Buchanan and they are denied our army with third and goal coming up. That was awesome by Mercer. Watch that. I mean this is usually a done deal but Jaden Taylor gets some penetration. Yeah. It's a nice job. The linebackers come over the top. I mean they could have conceded there. They could have folded. They could have, all right. Well we know that they're going to get a half inch here. It's mm -hmm. a yard but nice job by the white standing them up making sure they were there as he tried to bounce it outside. I mean, Army will still score, but that's a small victory for Mercer. McCoy now in at the B-back spot, the fullback, and McCoy takes it in. Sandon McCoy. Second time this season he's had, dare I say, a hat trick of touchdowns. And the cannons go off, and Army's up 34-3, capping a nine-play, 59-yard drive that took nearly four minutes. Three touchdowns for number three. Fullback dive so well done on the left side. I mean, they just, the left side just caved the whole line in. And rather than just going right up the middle, Santa McCoy bounced out to the C gap outside the tight end to the left where there was plenty of space. Good snap, good hold, and Landon Salyers makes it 35 3. Just over five remaining in the third quarter. Threes are wild. Third quarter, number three with his third touchdown of the day for Army. 513 remaining in the third, all Army 35-3. Sandon McCoy capping the last drive off with another touchdown and Armed Forces first responder today is none other than Sandon McCoy. His third three touchdown game of his career. The first came last year against UMass. The second against Middle Tennessee this year in the opener and today eight for 19 for three touch. That's now that's production Ross. <laughs> that looks like some old Jerome Bettis stat lines. <laughs> You're right. It really feels like Sandin averages a touchdown every two carries yep. at this point. You're right. Yeah. So a hat trick of hat trick TD games in his career for the first seat Sandin McCoy. Army's touchdown drives all have been under six minutes today in this game their longest five minutes and 36 seconds flags fly all over the field back 
out of your picture. Really late, too. Yeah, there were three of them. Mike Roach, our referee. Any idea? Or? That's usually some type of contact behind the play. Yeah. Three guys saw it, so whoever did it, they didn't get away with it. <laughs> Again, threes are wild. There's three flags near the 35-yard line. Roach discussing with his guys. There are said flags. Indication was against Mercer. Nobody seems to know what's going on. This is so 2020 right now. Here's Roach. He'll give us the word. Or not. Or not. <laughs> Coming over to talk with. I'm like fascinated now to hear what this is. I can't wait. Two coaches are like, all right, let's get the word and move on. As they play the Jeopardy music nice. in the stadium. Yeah, that's perfect timing. Personal foul, illegal blindside block on the receiving team number 45. That 15 yard penalty will be assessed and the ball will be re kicked. So, number 45 for Mercer is Divon McKinney. 45 right there. Let's see yeah. what he does. Yeah, they're not going to let you do that. Nope. If you're going back in that direction, three guys saw it. You know, back in the day, back when I played, <laughs> uh, as long as you got your helmet in front, you know, you were you were good. But now you can't make forcible contact to someone if they don't know you're coming, if they right. can't reasonably defend themselves. So you're allowed to just kind of put your hands in there. Uh, you can screen them or absorb them, mm -hmm. but you can't have forcible contact outside of the field of vision or in such a manner that the opponent can't reasonably defend themselves. I don't know why there was so much conversation I don't about either. it. I mean, three guys threw the flag. They saw it. Right. So then, Jeff Munkin, do you want it or not? Well, a guilty party there. That is Divon McKinney, as I mentioned. Salyer is going to kick this off from midfield. Smart choice yep. here. Bounces it. Reaching up to grab it is Fred Davis. Davis. Down to about the 22 yard line. That is where Mercer will go to work. With 5.07 remaining here in the third quarter. And Armed Forces football today proudly sponsored by USAA. So the last five possessions for Mercer. Two punts, one of which blocked. And two interceptions. Yeah, now what you're looking for. Now. Not so much. Harrison Frost comes on. See if they can generate a drive here. He's 14 out of 21 for 94 yards. Two picks, one by Cameron Jones, the other by John Radigan. The two things they've had success with, jet sweeps and Frost on bootlegs. And they don't do either one of them here. Right up the gut. That was Fred Davis. There's DeAndre Johnson, dangerous man. They were raving about him. What an outstanding young man he is, not just on the football field, but off it as well. And this is intercepted Jabari Moore. He is going to take it back. Pick six for Army. Jabari Moore had a fumble return for a touchdown in his first game back at Cincinnati a few weeks ago. Make it two for him. His second pick of the season, and Army on top, 41-3. Watch Jabari Moore. His eyes are going to be on the quarterback right there. As soon as he sees it's a short drop, I'm going. As soon as he saw that three-step drop, he knew exactly that it was the quick game, and he was going to try to get the ball out quickly. That is so well done. These Army defensive backs have been coached up so well on reading the quarterback's drop. 
Sure have as Moretzky drives the point after through and Jabari Moore, a 41 yard fumble return for a touchdown in that game against Cincinnati I mentioned. That was his first action of the season. What a return he made in that game. They've officially changed it. I'm now told the 29 yards on the return, but nevertheless, his second return for a touchdown. You see Drew Chronic there talking with his quarterback, Harrison Frost. A lot of teaching moments, certainly, from every game, but this one will be in. Here's what Army's defense has done. Johnny Nation started it, Ross. Against Middle Tennessee State. And then how about this one by Jabari Moore? That's one of the best plays I've ever seen. Really you know, to bat the ball down on an option and take it into the house, mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. And then right now, watch a short drop. That means it's a quick pass. Jabari Moore knew it. He jumps the route. Really well done by him. And if you're Harrison Frost, you have to understand that just because he's playing off coverage yeah. doesn't mean he's not going to jump and break on the route when you do the quick game like that. That's, you know, the Army's really well coached. They really are, they do a nice job. Daryl Dixon, the cornerback coach. Remember Cam Jones almost had an interception earlier yeah, back on I the do, same yeah. type of thing. Yep. Daryl Dixon's done a nice job getting these young corners coached up on how to read the drop of the quarterback. That quarterback's depth will tell you that it's gonna be a short pass. Army came into this game, eighth in the FBS in total defense, seventh in points allowed. Allowing just 13.2 points a game through six games played this season. And Harrison Frost, it looks like he's going to be done at least for this series with 439 remaining here in the third quarter. And we're going to get a look for the first time today at the number two quarterback. That is Carter Peavy, a freshman out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. Lawrenceville, Georgia. They make some pretty good quarterbacks there. I've heard. <laughs> Lots of good quarterbacks yes. there. And this is a good opportunity for PB to show what he can do, especially heading into the spring with the full Southern Conference slate. His first snap and now the second game that Mercer has played. It is a completion. And it's a first down completion caught there by Zach Davis. You know what I like about that, Ben, is so often you bring in a new quarterback, he's a freshman, everybody's expecting a handoff. Everybody's right, right. expecting, you know, something easy, get the feet wet. Nope, let's roll, let's run a little bootleg, get him on the edge and let him throw it. Heavy to the right side here. Ty Ray Devison. They list him, Ross. Devison at 5'8 and 233. We showed his legs in the first half. I mean, they are like sequoia trees. There's Frost on the sideline, 14 for 22, three interceptions. We've got an injured Army player down on the field, needing some attention with 358 remaining here in the third quarter. And Looks like number Skyers. 13, yep. yeah, Chris Skyers. Yep, Chris Skyers. Who did a nice job earlier this season against Cincinnati, the senior safety. Mm -hmm. He just happens to be b behind a couple of really good younger guys in Cedric Cunningham and Markwell Broughton. Yes. Trainer Tim Kelly on the right there, getting some help. One of his assistants out there looking at that left calf. We'll see if we can determine what may have happened. You'll see Devison. Lowers the boom. Skyers Oof. tries to put his shoulder in there. Yeah, you see that got leg. Twisted over himself there. That left leg got yep. bent over backwards. It's a lot of man coming at you there in Devison. Giving him a thorough look. They're working on his left foot there. Mm -hmm. You know, that is, you need some courage there, Ben. I oh, mean, yeah. You're 5'11, 190 pounds, and you're stepping up, and you see a 5'8. 233 pound man coming mm -hmm. and you know what he's going to do you know he's going to try to run right through you yep certainly favoring it in that replay you could see why he may, may have been favoring it and he is favoring it you know if there's good news for army it's that they've got a big lead so they already have a lot of second teamers in there mm -hmm. and so they shouldn't suffer any more injuries you wouldn't think to frontline players when they got air force in two weeks yep they're off next week. And we've touched on how deep they are at quarterback, playing the fifth and sixth guys for the second straight week with Anderson out, with Jamel Jones out. Jabari Laws hasn't played all year. 
And they went with Ballard and they went with Tyler. They're doing it again here today. We've talked about their depth at the fullback spot, the B back. That secondary group, you touched on it too, Ross. That is a very deep group. They have recruited and developed. Here's Tyree Devison. Devison, the big boy, breaks a couple tackles. And Devison inside of the 30. He has taken down a first down run from the senior, Tyree Devison. Nate Woody and the Army coaches are not going to be happy about this. No. They've got the second unit in there, and Mercer's starting to run right through them a little bit. Yep. 30 yard pickup. They feed the beast again. It's Devison. They don't even have the chain set. And he moved that ball quickly to the 21 as they're going fast here. Yeah, they're feeling it a little bit. They know that they've got an opportunity here against Army's twos. Fred Davis takes it just over the 15. That's another first down run for the Bears of Mercer. Impressive drive so far for Mercer and for Carter Peavy. You know, his first opportunity yeah. running the offense very effectively. Think about all the freshmen they have, Crosby and Wooten, and even on the offensive line, Manziel. Very rare to see a Division I team playing this many true freshmen. Really is. Here on the motion, man. Peavy looking his way. Doesn't want to force it in there. He's forced out of bounds there. Getting over there to force him out was Darian McDonald, the sophomore out of Massachusetts. Excellent coverage. You'll see Julian McDuffie's in the game. Remember, he wasn't able to play in the first half. Correct. Because of the targeting foul last week against UTSA. So McDuffie's really the only starter out there that's playing, although he didn't start today. Out of the gun, high snap, and Crosby dead in his tracks. Getting him up front there. Komarowski with a stop there for Army. Third and long coming up here with under two to play in the quarter now. Yeah, watch the nose tackle right there, Komarowski. You're going to see him knife in there, curl back around. Good job by the big man. That's a nice play by the sophomore. From West by God, Virginia, they call it. There you go. Mercer, six out of ten on third down. Peavy, nobody open. Can't get away. And broke free initially there. And it's Komarowski again in there making the stop. Yeah, and you got to go for it here. I mean, yep. on a fourth down. Nice job by Komarowski. Yep. Oh, uh, they are going to kick the field goal. All right. Yeah, I can't say I totally understand that. I mean, realistically, they're not going to be able to come back and win this game. I'd rather try to get a touchdown. Try to get a touchdown on the board. And even if you don't get it, Ben, you pin Army deep. I don't know what three more points really does for you here. Maybe a fake. Could be. 30-yard attempt they line up for. No fake. And they missed it. Wow. Just outside of the right upright. So he had hit earlier in the game for their only points. And they come up empty with 56 seconds remaining in the third quarter. That makes you feel even worse about sure the decision than to, you, you kick the field goal and you come up empty there. Yeah. That's tough. Long drive, they got nothing from it. Maybe that's the point of trying to kick the field goal is maybe they just wanted to make sure that they got something out of that long drive. Yeah. I would agree with you on that, certainly. Just try to get something out of it. You see the dejection on the sideline from Caleb Dowden. One for two on the season three games here in the fall for Mercer they're slated to play eight conference games beginning in late February Army back to it from the 20 and hold everything flag flew on the play is now in the game of quarterback you've got Christian Parrish Foul start offense the 58 five yard penalty first down well, that's on Sam Barzak, the guilty one. There is Parrish. Correction, 7-8, seven, 7-8. Eight, seven, eight. And is on Cody Winokur, who they've been real happy with, and they're getting some rep here in this game for the Black Knights. Maybe not so much after the penalty, but <laughs> things happen. Parrish with the key. 
Couple of white shirts in there. They go into the kicking net on the sideline afterwards. Good hustle. You like to see that from this Mercer squad. Dowling into the play and the freshman Parrish into the ball game. I mean, how many quarterbacks do they have at Army? Uh, they got like nine of them. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> that's one of the advantages. It really is of recruiting. Now they're bringing another one. in. Balan's in now. Marcus Balan is in. Yep. I think they really. This is their way of trying to get back at us. I think they're just trying to make our <laughs> job harder. That tricky Brent Davis, Maurice Balan now in the game. Hey! Wants to throw in trouble and is dropped inside of the ten yard line. And once again, Ross. There is Dowling, no quitting him. And that's going to do it to end the third quarter of play here along the banks that's of the, the Hudson. Third quarter. All Army against Mercer. 42-3 Black Knights. That's the end of the quarter. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network, presented proudly by the Home Depot. Colonel Josh Bookout, Commander of the 3rd Infantry Brigade Combat Team, 25th ID at Schofield Barracks, Hawaii. I'm a proud member of the class of 1998. I want to say to all the cadets and faculty at West Point, go Army! And I say mahalo. Thank you for your service. There's our line score. 7-3 game after one. Army was on top 21-3, and they have put 21 on the board so far in the second half to lead 42-3 with Ross Tucker in the booth, Tina Servasio down on the field. My name is Ben Holden. Great to have you with us wherever you're watching today. Our producer is Bill Thayer, our director, back with us this season, Michael Frank, Tom Wicks, our AD, and all of our great crew. The fourth underway, all Army, trying to win its fourth straight game after the loss at Cincinnati, the only blemish on the Army win-loss books this year, Ross. that is a very good Cincinnati team. Really good, team. Yeah. Army played them very tough. They did. Army's got a lot of opportunity coming up. You think about Air Force, mm -hmm. Tulane, Georgia Southern, Navy. That Georgia Southern team's a, a coach that built that program, did a pretty good job. <laughs> Drifting back, making the catch on the run about the 25, and a good yo, one yo. made back there by Landon Miller. Landon Miller. 45 seconds into the quarter. That's when Mercer will begin. It's time to take a look at today's Mercedes-Benz player profile, and it is Malcolm Morrison. We've called his name more than once today, man. Yeah, from New Rochelle, not too far away at all. Six tackles last week. He's had a nice day today as well. Played a lot last year as only a sophomore. He has another year left. Really has to play a unique role, that Apache role I talked about a couple times today. You have to be a good blitzer, a good open field tackler. You have to be good in coverage. He does it all. It's been good since he first came on the field for Army. Dad played many years in the National Football League, so he's got great bloodlines. There's the shift. We saw a lot of that early on in this game from Mercer. Davis up the middle. I'm going to give him five on the first down run. And I know people watching Ben might say 42 to three. Okay, mm -hmm. guess what? This opportunity, these reps for Mercer, is huge when you're trying to build a program to get reps against Army like this. And for these second team guys for Army, mm -hmm. this is their chance to earn more playing time. Dev is in, shake and bake there, picks up the first down, down to Tina. Well, talk about an opportunity for the Mercer program. Do you know that this trip to Army, West Point was the first time this program has flown on an airplane to an away game since 2013. Wow. Yeah, back then they flew to San Diego and Marist as well. And think about it. I mean, this is a time where a lot of people aren't traveling. It's even discouraged, but they had an opportunity to play Army in a football game. And uh, they put the boys on the plane and they got them here. Yeah, great stuff, Tina. I mean, it's, it's an opportunity for them to win or lose to be on a national stage and play here at this historic place and an historic program, a program that's really flexed its muscle under Jeff Munkin like it never has. Right, and for Mercer, they're building something, mm -hmm. and I, I, I'm telling you right now, it's only gonna be a year or two yep. before they're really competing in the Southern Conference. 
Drew Cronick said, number one, we need to love each other. Number two, we need to compete. Number three, believe. Mm -hmm. He really feels like the secret to his success and his other stops, it's culture. It's those three things. Yep. 47 and 7, his career head coaching record entering this game today. A delay. Devison lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Going to bring up third and five. You got to think this is four down territory right now mm -hmm. for Mercer. So they don't have to get all five here on third down, although I guess, you know, you never know. They did kick the field goal on the last drive. I still think they're at their best, whether it's Peavy or Frost, when they get that quarterback on the edge. Because it, it puts the second level defenders for Army in such a bind. Do you come up and try to stop the quarterback from running or do you stick with your coverage? Six of 11 on third down are the Bears of Mercer today. And Army not full. Great play breaking through there by Spencer Jones, who was waiting for the ball carrier and made that look easy. That was so well done. Watch Jones, 45. He sees it and triggers and goes right there. He could tell by the formation. Again, that's prep work during the week. He's fired up and he should be. Getting a chance to play, makes the most of it. He prepared to play today knowing he'd get a chance and he was right there for that jet sweep. That was awesome. Took down Brandon Mays. Sent to Tyrell Robinson from the 10. Robinson, a couple of moves. Got away from the long snapper. Breaks one tackle, flag flies. Robinson had said every day, Yesterday when we talked to him, every time he gets the ball, his first thought is making the first guy miss. He did there, but there is a penalty flag. It is down at the 18-yard line or thereabouts. He pretty much always does make he, the yeah, first guy miss. He does. See, see the very end of it. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 34. Ball be assessed half the distance to the goal line. The Army's ball first down. Timeout. There's the word from Mike Roach. We'll step aside. 11.03 to go in the ball game. All Army here at Mikey Stadium. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by MCOR. Build, power, service, protect. By the exchange. And by Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. Lusk. Reservoir looks so I wanted to water ski on that thing earlier, man. It was like glass. Beautiful shots here. At Mikey Stadium. 11.03 left in the game. 42-3 Army on top. We're gonna make it seven straight wins at home. There we go. There we go, baby. Dropped at the five-yard line was Iwan Marshall. The two guys that Handled the workload at quarterback last week. Did it again today. It looks like they're all done for the day, and they've got more guys in there. Your thoughts on these two, Ross? Did a nice job. Pretty much what was expected, right? Ballard yep. is the guy that can make the throws like he did. Tyler Moore is going to be the one that runs with the football, and that's exactly what he did as well. Loss of four on the run by Marshall. The dive right straight ahead. That one carried by Lingenfelter, who's listed as a tight end. This is going to get the Army coaches frustrated because when when they put their backups in, they don't expect there to be much of a drop off. Right. They want to continue to run the offense as normal, and they have not been able to do that ever since they've taken out Tyler and Ballard in the first string offensive line. 49-2 the play count. One went for a touchdown. This one is going to be close to a first down. The catch made there by Cale Cole Catterbone, a sophomore out of Plantation, Florida. First time we've called his name this season. They're going to say it's fourth down, I guess. I thought he had it. Yeah, it was real close. They're moving the sticks first now. Down. They further discussed and they said, up, oh, first down. Neither, neither, neither <laughs> line judge wanted to make the decision. <laughs> Somebody like make one. Line. Not it. <laughs> Unbalanced to the right here. Yep. 
Straight ahead again, Lingenfelter just dragging people out to the 30. He's got another first down for the Black Knights. Well, that's Tyson Riley. The number change again <laughs> gets you, man. Tyson Riley. He was 89 one week. He was. But that's he's... not even his listed number. His listed yeah. number is 38. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, they're messing with us. And it's they're... listed as 89 at the bottom. Right. He's, he's either 38 or 89, but today he's 43. Referees discussing further. QB keep, nothing doing there. Three white shirts to the ball for Mercer and on the carry there was Maurice Ballon. Ken Stanley, sophomore linebacker for Mercer with the tackle. You know, I always felt like, Ben, in these situations, you learn a lot about yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I probably said this before, but I still remember being down 28 nothing to Colgate late in the fourth quarter and deciding, you know what, I'm gonna go out there and play as hard as I possibly can, knock as many guys on the ground as I possibly can. Yep. Got to do that in those times. Flag flies. Parrish with a run. At quarterback to the 38. We'll have to check the penalty here with our referee, Mike Roach. Personal foul. Illegal block below the waist. Offense number 89. It's a 15 yard penalty. Second down. Chop block called. He's a tight end right there. He's probably going to go try to cut off the backside. You can't. Correction, there is no foul for the illegal block on number 89. It'll be second down. So that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're not really supposed to be able to roll. He kind of got his helmet in front, but I'm surprised that they saw that and threw it and then changed their mind. <laughs> Correction, it'll be third down, third down. So that was Lingenfelter, number 89, who is a tight end. Sorted it out. Wiley is wearing 43. Wow, and they're not sure where the ball should be, the no. clock should be running. No. This is, has not been a great second half for the officiating crew. It really hasn't. No, it hasn't. A lot of confusion. I do those sometimes. There's push-ups like that. No words needed for that. Yeah, you well you push there up. There is no the legal block below the waist because the tight end was in the tackle position. We'll take the result of the play and it'll be third down. All right. Well, we've got that sorted out. So you have to you have to um, if you're gonna have to cut somebody low, Ben, you have to do it between ten to two. Think about a clock. You have to be between 10 and 2 on the mm -hmm. clock, unless you're an offensive lineman. So if you're a tight end there, he wasn't between 10 and 2. He was outside of the, the 10 to 2 on the clock, but because it was an unbalanced line, he is allowed to do that. So that's where the confusion was. So I take a good job by the officials ultimately sorting it out. So 10 and 2 is just not for driving. Correct. Right. From the 38, Tyson Riley will pick up the first down for Army to the 42, gets five. Christian Parrish in a quarterback. You see Artis Homs, 32, first time we've called his name today in the game as well. Armed Services Football is proudly supported by Verizon. Coming up on seven minutes remaining, all Army on their way to their fifth win this season here at Mikey. Be there fourth in a row. They like this Tyson Riley. They sure do. Freshman from Mount Vernon, Missouri. He's got a bright future. There's a keep. Parrish wrapped up and dropped. They're going to give him about a half a yard on the carry. And Parrish, a guy that early in the season, early in the season, I mean by like 
the third week of August when things really got going in camp for Army. Parrish was a guy they wanted to get him in too, but you know, you think about it, seven quarterbacks have played for Army this season. I mean, that, I don't know if I've ever heard of that. Have you? No, because most teams don't have seven quarterbacks. Right. I mean, you have four, maybe five on scholarship. Most Look at this set. The old wishbone. Oklahoma back in the 60s. Or Army back in the 60s. This one, carry. that's Maurice Ballon in the game at quarterback Maurice. now. Well, this brings back memories. <laughs> High school back days. Back in the day, when I remember Jamel Holloway, Oklahoma oh, in the yeah. 80s. Look at the wishbone offense. These three guys in the backfield, one in front of the two wings. I love it. Show something different there. Gets two good blocks by both the backs as well. Michael Roberts in the game blocking downfield. I'd like to see them do that every once in a while, you know? Change it up, give a different look. 14-yard pickup. Juan gives off to Tyson Riley. Tyson Riley. Picking up some yardage on this drive. I mean, he's he's big, he's got the size, but for that fullback spot, that V-back spot, but he's much taller than most of those guys are. Yeah, you don't often get a fullback that's 6'2. Mm -hmm. And the thing, I mean, this is the thing with Army. They're so deep. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize they send, uh, you know, 50 some kids to the prep school every year, yep. and then another 20 come direct here. So they're able to recruit about 70, 75 football players a year. Mm -hmm. 11th play of the drive. Give it off to Riley once again. Based on the spot I'm seeing, he's about a yard short here. Actually, he's going to be about two yards shy of it. Third down coming up under five to play in this one. All Army. You see Dean Powell right there, Ben? Mm -hmm. He's in at center right now. Yeah. Started the game at right guard, plays a lot of left guard. But remember, Noah Knapp went down in the game. So they want to make sure if something happens, Dean Powell will be ready to go at center. Always be prepared. One of two Powell boys on the team, his brother on the team as well. Here's Riley with his sixth carry. Riley on the carry. And he gets another first down. He's over 30 yards down. on the day. And this drive and shooting it up. Time now to take a look at our day in the life for Cadet brought to you by Verizon. All right, Tucker, what do you got? What is lunch formation? It's you get in formation, you go into lunch as a company or unit, and you, you go into Washington Hall and eat. Oh, got it. My my lunch formation is okay. Here's my ham sandwich. <laughs> here's my chips. <laughs> and here's the pitch. And here's the pitch near side, inside of the 20. Into the hands there of Jordan Blackman. This is Jordan Blackman. 17-yard pickup for Blackman. This is the most classic Army drive of the day. It sure is. They haven't had a lot of no. Army. And this is this will make the coaches happy mm -hmm. that they're able to move the ball with twos and a lot of threes out there right now. 14th play of the drive right here. Riley, Tyson Riley dragging a defender inside of the 10-yard line. This is all Tyson Riley. Once we got sorted out what uniform he was in, but he's looked very good. Yeah, I mean, watch. He's got nice feet. That was well blocked. Mercer has a lot of their second string guys out there as well right now, which I think is smart. You know, you're building a program at Mercer. Find out what the other guys can do when they mm -hmm. get some live reps. Yep. They'll have one more game against Abilene Christian, who we saw here yeah. earlier in the year. Yep. off Riley pushing the pile he gets inside of the five spot him down at the four second and goal coming up two and a half remaining in the game Army's gonna be six and one after this one it's got to be so fun to be an army offensive lineman you must you have to love this well because you're you're firing off you know you're knocking them back so much of college football these days you know, it's the quick passing game. It's mm -hmm. the zone read. You're not really getting a chance to really hit people. I mean, you know, when you're 300 pounds, Ben, <laughs> the, the fun part of being 300 pounds is knocking other human beings back and down. Like, that's what's fun, not mm -hmm. just pass blocking or doing things finesse or lateral. You want to come forward. You want to come vertical. Here's Riley. Took him down around the ankles on the tackle there, did Ken Stanley. 
Third and goal coming up. He's getting a whole game's worth of carries on this drive. He's close to 10 in the game. He's going to be sore. His parents are watching. The heck of a drive you had there, son. Uh -huh. Give him a touchdown. I think he's earned it on this drive. Oh, no doubt about it. You got to let him cap it off. Third and goal. Flag down. I think the left guard might have flinched a little bit for Army. I don't know if they saw that, but I saw a little movement resetting in the stance. Start. Offense, number 60. It's a five yard penalty. Third down. It's on Connor Fanukin. Watch the left guard right here. Yeah, move his hands. He moved a little bit. You can't adjust though. Once you put your hand on the ground and you're in a three point stance, you can't take that hand back off of the ground. And he did it just a little bit, lean forward a little bit as well. Fanukin's played a lot today. They he like has. him. Winokur's played quite a bit too. Here's a toss. Blackman trying to stay in bounds and does a touchdown. Vintage Army drive there. Capping off this game and taking it in for the touchdown is the senior Jordan Blackman. Wow. With 60 seconds left, and they are like kids in a candy store surrounding him after that touchdown. Blackman is the wing back to the right, comes in motion, they pitch it to him and watch him finish the run. And the senior gets a touchdown. Did you see his teammates yes. all over him? That, to me, is what this is all about. Mm -hmm. It gives me chills. Moretzky on for the point after, knocks it through. 49-3, 17 plays, 91 yards. Jordan Blackman, I don't ever remember calling his name. A proud moment here at Mikey Stadium for him late in this one. Late stages of this one, just a minute left, and it's all Army. Coming up next, our college football action continues with Houston taking on Navy. And then the Mountain West kicks things off. Wyoming takes on Nevada. That's followed by UNLV at San Diego State. It's all right here on CBS Sports Network. And with the Navy, yep, you know it. They run the triple option as well, and they got a couple good ones in their be-back room, Ross. Yeah, a little bit different body types. Carruthers and Smith both have some serious wheels. They're not kind of the bigger bodies like Army usually employs at that position. So that'll come up at 3.30 Eastern. John Sadak, Randy Cross. She and Stan McBurch will call that one for you. 60 seconds remaining in this one. Army looking to improve to six and one. Make it seven straight wins. Going back to last season here at Mikey. Time to pay some more bills. We'll take a time off, come back with a final minute here for Mikey. Minute left here at Mikey Stadium. Army on their way to going six and one with a bye week and then Air Force coming in. The band making sure they're fresh and ready, finely tuned, and they are. And Army's taking care of business here today, a little TCB. So the final 60 seconds here. PD in it, quarterback. Came in after the third interception that was thrown. Tackle made in bounds. Good job hustling over there. It was Spencer Jones that called his name a couple of times here in the second half. Uh, I'm still not over the celebration for Blackman's touchdown. That was awesome. That was so special. Yep. You know, these guys know how much time he's put in practice these four years. He's a senior. PD on the run, keeps it. Jones there again. Jones, I think, has made every tackle since he's been in the game. He's been good. Only a freshman, 6'1", 240, Austin, Texas. They know how to play football in Austin, Texas, and he's been everywhere. Very impressive freshman. He's been the defenses in the fourth quarter for Army. Their version of Tyson Riley. Riley on that last drive for Army. One Blackman scored on. We got whistles going off all over the place.
And all for naught, that's the ball game. Army wins it 49 to three. They go to six and one. And Jeff Munkin and his guys continue to, to steamroll forward. Very efficient win for Army. They did it a different way. Look at that, six and one. Best start since 1996. Six. They've got some tough games coming up though including Air Force in a couple weeks today. Very workmanlike performance. Excellent job getting turnovers on defense. The punt block on special teams. And now they have two weeks to get ready for the Falcons. That will be a big one here at Mikey on CBS. Sure will be. Army's won four straight overall since the loss, the only loss to Cincinnati. And Mercer makes its way down to join Army in the playing and singing of the Army West Point alma mater. Let's watch and listen. And the West Point alma mater. to beat Navy here at Mikey Stadium in December. The game's been moved here, and Black Knights make their way off the field. Mercer will make the trip back to Macon, Georgia. Good start. It just kind of unraveled on them there in the third quarter. And too many turnovers, too many miscues. Army convincing 49-3 win. We'll come back and have more. We're not done yet here from Mikey Stadium. out of the stadium for Army, their core of cadets, approximately 4,300 after their squad. Wins big, 49 to three. Get down to Tina, who's standing by with Jeff Monken. All right, Ben, thank you. Coach Monken, congratulations. Your fourth straight win, and you have to go deep into your roster because you can. What does that say about your team out there and the way they fight? Oh, I, I was really glad we got a chance to play a lot of those guys, and we did, both on offense and defense. Uh, excited that the defense held them out of the end zone. They didn't score any more points on us, and I'm just so pleased with the way the defense is playing. We, we played a lot of young guys on offense. It's good to get them some reps and good to see Maurice back in there running some of our read plays. You know, while you're talking about the players, though, in the fourth quarter, I want to bring up Jordan Blackman. He had only played in one other game, and he's a senior, so it's not like you're getting the young players in. When you see your team celebrate his touchdown like that, what, what does that mean to you? Where does that come from? Well, I was in I was in Brent's ear down here about trying to get him the ball, get him a touchdown, and, and uh, we, we tried to toss it a couple of times, and they did a really good job of defending it. We missed some blocks, and so he called it again, and uh, and he had to weave through there. But he, th this kid is beloved by his teammates. He's a great kid on our leadership council, and uh, and he's he, just exciting for him. And and he had to he had to find that end zone. It wasn't an easy walk, in, so really proud of him. Excited to see those guys celebrate. They're probably dancing like crazy in there right now. <laughs> Going back to last week, you said you were scratching your head watching Cade Ballard and Tyre Tyler help this Army team win when they had no reps. They'd never played in games like this before. What did you think of their performance this week coming off of that? They, they did a great job again. They took care of the ball, and the one uh, Cade got knocked out of his hands, we were, we were trying to take it out there on the option and, and pitch the ball. Uh, but really, that was the only mishap with the ball. I thought they did a really nice job leading the team, and obviously last week gave them a lot of confidence, and, and our team was very confident in them. So uh, hopefully we'll see on film that it was a good performance. I'm sure there'll be some things to fix, but big game coming up in two weeks. It's nice to know we got those two guys ready. And you're finally getting touchdowns now from Tyrell Robinson. I know you've been waiting for that. Uh, what was your reaction? Oh, it, 
just fantastic. I mean, it's it, it's fun to celebrate the the accomplishments of these guys, and when they score, they make a big play, and and uh, just proud of our team, and and just everybody how hard they're playing and how 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 well they're playing together. Coach, I have to ask you before I let you go, what do you think about now the Army-Navy game being played here at Mikey Stadium on December 12th? I'm excited. I'm excited. It, and frankly, it wouldn't matter to me where we play that game. It's going to be a big game. It's going to be two teams battling their hearts out. Uh, but it's going to be a lot of fun to play right here at home in Mikey Stadium. And and uh, and hopefully that'll that'll help us win the football game. Ultimately, that's that's what we're hoping for. And you're doing a lot of celebrating. I know you want to share a celebration with someone. I do. Uh, Jimmy Register, my, my father-in-law, is 80. And uh, I just want to wish him a happy birthday, having a big party for him down in Florida. And I wish I was there to celebrate with him. Oh, so, a little happy birthday, Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Coach. Appreciate Thanks it. Congratulations on the Thank win. Beat Air Force. Ben Ross, back to you. All right. Thanks, Tina. So he switched it up to beat Air Force after that one. Beat Air Force. They, they got him in a couple weeks. They I, do. Like, I like him getting the uh, the father-in-law birthday wishes. He knows what he's doing. He knows clutch. what he's doing. He's always prepared. That's right. He's a general in every sense. <laughs> Three turnovers for Mercer. Army got points, touchdowns off every one of those turnovers, and it was just a dominating, steamrolling win for Army today. You almost forget, Ben, that Mercer scored on their opening drive. That's right. They, they were did. up 3 yeah. nothing, a really efficient opening drive, and then 49 in a row unanswered by Army. And the second half was especially dominant. The yeah. first half was really more the defensive turnovers and special teams it was the second half grinding the clock that was more army football all right that is ross tucker ben holden of course tina servasio down on the field and i mean you got you got two weeks now for jeff monken i mean there's not much more to say about this game let's be honest i mean they went about eight deep at every position <laughs> that is the focus for this team now well and they thought about earlier they were trying to schedule someone for next week and then as it got closer yeah. this is their seventh game yep. air force is only playing their third game they want to get ready for that one. They host both commander and chief games right, right here. here. They have an excellent team this year. They have a chance to get the CIC trophy for the third time in four years. Yeah, they want it back. We, we got that message the first time we met with Jeff Munkin and his coaches and his players this year. We got that sense. And I, I just can't say enough about the defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, only three points. You've got guys like Elijah Riley's playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. Cole Christensen playing for the Chargers. They lost two NFL guys, and yet they've come out and they've been much better on defense this year. The defense hasn't really had a bad game yet. They haven't. One of the top defenses in the country in just about every category this year is Army. Once again, our final score, Army 49-3 to over Mercer. For Ross, Tina, all of our great crew, my name is Ben Holden. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. It was our pleasure to bring it to you. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. After the break, Houston and Navy coming your way.